So our next speaker is Oriel Bergig, VP of R&D at Augmento. Take it away. Thank you, Ori. Um, so today I want to um, use this time and, and make a prediction of uh, where augmented reality technology is going. Now, I, I hate doing predictions, they're always wrong. And I think I'm probably wrong. But I think it's direction correct. And uh, it's the first time after four years in this conference and every year I was presenting something um, that I feel comfortable enough to actually make a prediction on where uh, augmented reality technology is going. Now, the, the Compass for me is a great framework to try and, 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 um, and make a prediction with. Uh, because uh, think about the needle right, of that Compass. Um, you, you want to be able to use as, as much as possible facts when you're making a prediction. And if you look where we are standing today, it's a fact, where augmented reality technology, we just heard the state of the art. So we can, we can measure where is that. And then, so that would be the central point of that, uh, that's the, the needle, at the center one. And then if, if, we, if we go all the way back to the blue point there, this is where we came from, then we, we see their direction. And as, as a startup, I think just knowing what is their direction is, um, is pretty much like walking in the woods. You want to know that you're walking in the right direction and you don't just keep going. Now, if you see more data points that are more facts supporting that direction, then instead of maybe walking that direction, again, being in a startup, you want to maybe run. And so the good news is, is we are running to the direction that I want to share with you today. <coughs> and um, so last year, I was here on the uh, OG competition. And um, I, I did a demonstration of um, What's called slam. Yeah, had a lot of fun. But obviously, I can walk with the phone toward those dots, which is the underlying map, the, the slam map. And that's where they match it. Uh, I can, if I turn toward the audience, in this case, left or right, and go back, it will fail. This is uh, what today is being um, uh, referred as a tabletop slam. Uh, some of the speakers talked about it before, or small-scale slam. So this is where we are today. Small-scale slam is the state of the art in R&D uh, for augmented reality. Where did we come from? We came from markers that then became flat objects, NFT, some called it. And now we're seeing also uh, a lot of research in 3D uh, objects, augmenting 3D objects. But going, you know, going further with this direction, where are we going to be in uh, three years from now, two years from now, maybe a year from now? So we're going to be in large scale now, which is pretty much what we imagine when we think about the augmented reality back to the sci-fi movies, which is instead of just walking on the stage to where those dots, which is my map of the world that has to be there um, for the augmentation to survive, I can walk freely anywhere, and I can augment anywhere without any limitations. Now, the, um, the good news, or a supporting data point toward this direction, is that if you're able to create a large-scale slab system, um, it's much less limited than previous technologies. Now, it's not also the same technologies as before. So a large-scale slam, although it has a very similar name to small-scale slam, it's not the same technology. And that's something that I've learned by trying to take that tank and extend it to the street level. And we've learned it at Augmento, and we had to move to a totally different uh, set of technology stack. Now, the reason that large-scale slam is much less limited than small-scale slam or markers or objects is not just because of evolution of time. It's because the technology is different. And so, in markers and objects, there is, there, is, there is something I'm trying to augment, that object. I'm holding my phone here, and the fundamental problem is that the further the phone is from the object, the, more the, the smaller the object is. And so you're trying to match uh, a small object, a low resolution square, to a previous frame. That's very difficult, and that's why it's limited. Then in large-scale time, you're pretty much using all the information that is on the screen. But then you're trying to rematch the map, the dots that were in, those, in this video, to the next frame and to the next frame. So you're trying to take a pre 
made or made in, in progress map and try to rematch it somewhere. That's also very difficult to do. And that's a limitation. So if you move out of that map and you come back, there's a problem. However, in large scales then, what you actually need to do is get rid of that map. Um, now that's very difficult to do. But if you're able to do it, it takes years of R&D, but if you're able to do it, then you got rid of limitations in standard of the user experience, which is the most important factor at the end of the day. It's very robust. Now I want to take you to a totally different conversation. Let's, let's switch gears and talk about navigation. Indoor navigation, outdoor navigation, um, and you'll see how everything connects. So well, first of all, you know, coming from business, what, what is, where is the biggest market today? We've been in augmented reality. I've been in augmented reality for seven years now. I've been waiting for the market to come. Now, it's come. Uh, and we have some interesting predictions about where. But where is the biggest market, AR or navigation? So today we see that you know, navigation, location-based services, is being used everywhere. So there's a huge market there. I don't need to, I don't need to, to go um, more um, to convince you about that. But let's talk about the history of technology in that space. And it started from a single method. There was a GPS, and it told, it told you where you are. Then came multiple missions. If there was a Wi-Fi in the area, then Wi-Fi would be used instead of the GPS. Now, the, the, the latest R&D in all the labs of, of location services, of input, position services, is about fusing all those, if there's Wi-Fi, NFC, um, illumination, whatever, you name it, trying to fuse them into one common framework to give you an approximation of location. But turns out that if you just add the camera as another measurement, it becomes, again, large-scale snap, which is exactly the same technology I referred to previously for doing augmented reality. So now that we've connected these two dots, and we understand that navigation um, as a market, but also as a technology, uh, so that navigation as a technology um, is, is pretty similar to the technology of the future of where AR is going, we made a pretty interesting case of why uh, we maybe want to be able to not only walk in that direction, but to start to run there. And so this is my work assumption, and this is what we've been doing. Earlier this year, we presented the first uh, product. It's on the Apple Store. You can try it. It's named Oboto. Oboto is a robot that came from outer space. It's a little bit lonely, and you need to introduce him to this world. Uh, in this case, uh, this guy in the, in the subway, actually, it started like one of those guys taking a video of him, right? like any other guy with an iPhone. And then he didn't leave me for 15 minutes. He thought it's Hollywood time. Uh, the robot, if it gets mad, it starts shooting on, on things around you. Uh, more, 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 more so if you, if you uh, mess up too much with a bottle, it can actually turn against the player and, and, and shoot on you, on your screen. So you can try this uh, on, on the Apple Store. Now, in terms of technology, this is really a first step in a large-scale SLAM or AR system. This is part of a bigger pipeline, and we released it as a product first. Now, no, you know, on, if, if you download it and you try it, you'll see that there's no need in this technology for a feature-rich, good area. So it just works everywhere. Uh, there is no internalization. It just, just you tap the screen and it comes. But really what's important is, is that it's part of a much larger system. So the question is how far are we from this large scale AR that is also a navigation system that can not only uh, uh, benefit from the AR as a market that is growing, but also from uh, the navigation position system market that is more established and there's more money there. And the question is that we're very close. So this is coming, um, this is actually the first time we're showing that. Um, uh, so it's coming right from the oven of the R&D in our labs. And you can see that as the camera is moving, we're leaving breadcrumbs. And this, breadcrumbs, this, this motion is very natural in a large scale area. And the breadcrumbs are very stable in the space. So, um, I'm, I'm actually excited to show that to you. 
It's, it's the first time. So good. So, uh, but, but I'll show you the same technology, now in a different view, uh, that, is, that will speak more to someone who is in, um, that comes from the navigation uh, field, from the in, in, uh, indoor positioning systems, for instance. Um, so, oh, sorry. Okay. So, uh, so now this is, this is the same view, but without the augmentation, without leaving the breadcrumbs, um, which, I, by the way, was, was done in Unity. This technology uh, has an SDK that plugs into Unity. Uh, and now, you see that uh, it's just the camera moving. You don't see the augmentation, but you can see on the plot what the user is doing as an indoor navigation type of view. This is called also, uh, in, in, in the slam, in, in the more professional terms, this is called dead reckoning. So you can see that uh, the, uh, the system knows exactly where the phone is, even though these, these stairways are dark, uh, there's no, 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 no good features there. In terms of computer vision, this is the nightmare of computer vision systems in the world. You put, you put any computer vision system there without the sense of vision, without using the gyros and the accelerometers in a very precise way, and you don't get a result that is uh, compelling as this one. So I'll just let you know, uh, that's the last slide, so I'll just let you enjoy that. And we can do some questions. Questions for Ariel. Yes. So what sensors are you using besides the camera? Is that only the camera? Gyro repeat, and repeat the question. Repeat the oh, question. Which, which sensors are we using? So we're using a camera, a gyro, and an accelerometer. The same, the same framework, by the way, the, the same uh, type of uh, sensor fusion um, can, it's, it's the same type that has been used also in Wi-Fi signals. Uh, so this is where this is going. Right. Yes. Is it working with a regular iPad camera? Because it looks like it's a wide angle camera. So yes. Yeah, question? Uh, so the question is, is it looking, is it, is it working with a regular camera that is on the iPad or, the, or is it working only with a wider uh, camera. So we, we, we added a, uh, a wider um, uh, lens on it, uh, but that's why it's still in R&D. It's coming to the regular cameras. It's not very far from there. Yes. Last question. Yes, please. The, there is no SDK for that, and we are not planning to release an SDK. It's more of a partner uh, type of play for us. Uh, we have an SDK that works with Unity, and that's how we did the breadcrumbs demo. But that was what I was uh, telling. So. Okay, thanks so, very much. Ray. So, yeah, if, if you have um, more questions about that, I'll be in the conference for, uh, in, uh, today and tomorrow. We can, we can, we can talk, or just show me an email.